Hey, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. No matter time it is, I hope that you, my friends, are having an amazing day. I have been MIA for at least, well, it's been a couple months, let's be honest, more than a couple months. I don't know if you knew this, but I should be dead right now, 100%. Uh, back on January 19th of 2023, I had a massive heart attack called a STEMI, which uh, commonly known as a Widowmaker. Basically, my left anterior descending artery the one that supplies your heart with a, a majority of its blood was 100% blocked. And I thought I was having a dang panic attack. I deal with anxiety and I have a lot of pressure in my life if you haven't noticed. And I thought I was just having a panic attack, a little bit of anxiety that day. And I was literally cooking burgers at my house on a Thursday afternoon, flipping burgers. I'm like, man, I, I, I'm feeling a little anxious today. I, I can't really figure out what's, what's going on. And my wife, Ashley, she was uh, out running errands. I had called her and said, hey, how far away are you? And she's like, I'm 10 minutes away. I'm like, okay. I'll hang out and wait. And so I waited for a little bit. She came home and uh, I, just, I was like, hey, let's just go for a walk around the neighborhood. It was probably like the worst thing you could do when you're having a dang heart attack. So we're taking a walk around the neighborhood. I'm feeling okay, but I'm, I'm, I'm just, the anxiety feeling, that pressure is just not going away and started kind of creeping up into my neck. And I, I came home and uh, now it's like an hour after this symptom started. And I'm like, well, let me just, let me just kind of relax a little bit. Maybe take, take a hot shower, watch TV. And so we're trying to relax and, and I hop in the shower and when I got out of the shower, I took a hot shower, I felt pretty good. But as soon as that cold air hit me, and this is January so it was a little bit chilly here in Phoenix, even in Phoenix. As soon as that cold air hit me, um, I, I started shivering uncontrollably. And so that went on for maybe like five minutes. Then I eventually collapsed on the floor. And now it's 3.30 in the afternoon. And so this has been going on for about three, a little less than three and a half hours. And so I actually FaceTimed uh, my buddy Trace, and he's a PA, and I really trusted his advice. I'm like, hey, I'm FaceTiming this guy. I'm like, hey, what should I do? And he's like, hey, dum dum, you should probably go to the ER and just see what's going on. That's probably not anxiety. I was taking a couple uh, Xanax, which I hate taking, by the way, but anxiety wasn't going away, right? And so now I'm at a point where I had to make a decision. Hey, let's go to the hospital. So Ashley took her sweet time trying to get us there, by the way. I love her to death, but she was driving like 35 and a 40. Drive down to the hospital, I walked myself in. And I walked in, and I remember talking to the front lady, uh, the, desk, the desk clerk, and, she, uh, and I said, hey, I'm either having a heart attack or a panic attack, and I can't figure out which. And she kind of gave me a strange look, and she looked at me, and you know, she's like, okay. And the double door opened up, and the gurney came out, and I hopped into the gurney. And I started blacking out, and so I was really, really close. Um, at that point, you know, they put me on an EKG, figured out I'm having a heart attack, I was unconscious. But I remember a couple different things. Number one, I remember actually getting my date of birth wrong. Um, I'm September 14th, and she said September 13th. I woke up enough, I was conscious enough to, to correct her on that. And then I remember very specifically, one of the funniest things, and timing is everything in comedy, right? So I'm laying on the gurney, uh, at this point, I'm naked and they're shaving me to do surgery. And the guy leans over the top of me and he goes, do you eat a lot of eggs? And I'm thinking to myself, like, it's cholesterol, eggs? Yeah, I do eat a lot of eggs. And he goes, because you're yoked. And I, I will never forget that for as long as I live. And so they rushed me into surgery. I'm unconscious at this point. I don't remember anything. I woke up about three hours later, about 7.30 at night, and they put a stent in. And, um, you know, unfortunately, a lot of complications came for me waiting too late. I think if I had gone in right away when I started having symptoms, I wouldn't have the complications that I do. But the unfortunate reality is that a big portion of the left side of my heart, uh, the muscle died. And so that's left me with something called systolic heart failure. And unfortunately, you know, that is 100% fatal. And the only treatment for that at this point is drugs, which can prolong your life, uh, or a transplant, which I'm not eligible for. You need, it's based on a point system, and you need a certain amount of points to get a heart transplant, and I'm not there yet. Um, that is the unfortunate reality. I've had two uh, heart surgeries since. The last one was eight weeks ago today, matter of fact. And so the timing on this video is very, very poignant. Uh, if there's anything I can give you in the lessons that I've learned over the last, really, you know, six months, is that life is way too short. It's way too short. And for me, I'm a very, very driven individual and a very you know, high level producing individual. And I can't think of anything but work. We needed to have grace. 
And it's very important to give yourself grace at, at certain points in your life. And one of the things I've learned is just to appreciate things in time, especially with people that you care about. And so we've done something that, you know, we've really changed our lifestyle. I've really, uh, I've sold off a lot of things that used to matter to me, like materialistic things, and really simplified my life. But bigger than that, you know, spending time with family. So we took a two and a half week RV trip around the, the country, the West Coast, and spent time with the kids, really good quality time, turned off the phone, delegated all my duties to, you know, the, the board of directors, and was able to take time for myself and my family, and really appreciating the people that had been there for me. And a couple different things came out of this thing, but number one was, I really understand who is on my side now. You know, who is really a ride or die. And I've really, I don't want to say I've discarded the others, but I've surrounded myself with people that really have a like mindset, that truly genuinely care about me. And people in my life that are here today are not really the same people that were in my life before the heart attack. And so I'm trying to figure out why I didn't do that sooner. Why I didn't simplify my life sooner? Why I didn't appreciate the people around me sooner? And it's so important to really do that. And take time and audit your life. Are you doing things that make you happy? Are you doing things that can add a lot of value? And when we make our lives about materialistic things, you know, like whether it be cars or personal items, you know, Louis bag or whatever the situation is, and you accomplish that goal, it's very unfulfilling. And I can tell you from this is from my personal experience, the most fulfilling thing you can ever do is help somebody else. So I'm going to leave you with a couple of different things. Number one, make your goals about helping other people for a couple of different reasons. Number one, you can never reach that goal. I Meaning you can never help enough people in your life. You can never make that impact. But I want you to start to think about your legacy. What does it mean when you're gone? What kind of impact are you going to leave on this world when you depart? And for me, that is the single most important thing is how people are going to remember me. So um, I'm back, number one. I feel good. I feel great, matter of fact. Better clarity mentally. I'm stronger emotionally. And while I'm weaker physically, everything else compensates for it. So I'm very, very thankful. I'm very blessed to be here. Obviously, God had a different purpose for me, and I think that this is my second, my second chance. So expect a lot more content from me uh, because truly my purpose has shifted to really helping people and that includes you. So please take two seconds to like and subscribe so you can see all my new videos. Thank you for tuning in. I genuinely appreciate you, and I love you genuinely beyond words. We'll see you very, very soon. Take care.